Hello and welcome to the Rocks Cry Out. I'm Indiana Joe and we've come on this lovely blustery day to Windy Knoll, just outside of Castleton in Derbyshire. Uh, you can actually see Mamtor just behind me. And we've come here today to look for fossils, specifically to ask the question, how did the fossils actually get into the rocks that are all around here? So come join me as we go and explore. Now, a good place to start in order to answer this question is, what actually is a fossil? Uh, now, you see, I've got a fossil with me at the moment. Um, any ideas what this is? You probably got it straight away. It is a shark tooth fossil. And you probably got that because, well, it looks like a shark tooth. However, if you were an ancient Greek, this was a completely bizarre revelation. You see, everybody knows sharks live in the water. They don't live in the rocks. So how did you get a shark tooth into the rocks? Now, if you are an ancient Greek, you believe in a whole system of gods. And your Greek gods are just like humans, just a little bit bigger and a little bit better. So if we can create things, they can create bigger things. And if we can play tricks, the gods can play even bigger tricks. And if you believe that, as the Greeks did, what you believe is that the gods had hidden these into the rocks in order to confuse us, to play tricks on us. And that's exactly what they believed. In fact, they even called them tongue stones, because upside down, they look a little bit like our tongues. And this idea that these fossils were tricks that were put into the rocks continued for hundreds of years. And it wasn't until the mid 1600s when a man called Nicholas Dino, who believed in the Bible, and more importantly, believed that the God of the Bible would not play tricks on us, that the God of the Bible would not lie to us. And he published a great big thick book explaining how, if this looks like a shark tooth, guess what? It probably is a shark tooth. And instantly you have opened up a brand new branch of science, paleontology, the study of fossils. So what actually is a fossil? Well, a fossil is the preserved remains of an organism that was living in the past, whether that be a plant, an animal, or something else. So this shark was living in the sea, it got caught up and buried, and the tooth became preserved in the rocks, so we can go dig it up today. But what does the word fossil actually mean? Because it's actually made up of two parts, fos and ill. Fos literally means a hole, and ill refers to what's in that hole. So if you want to go and find fossils, you need to go look in a hole. Which is exactly the reason why we've come to Windy Knoll, to this great big hole behind us. Okay, so we've come down into the cave, into our big hole, and we've instantly started finding ourselves some fossils just over here. Um, you can see they're mostly seashells, marine creatures. We've got ourselves a brachiopod and some uh, bryozoan and some coral and crinoids and all sorts in here. And what's really amazing about fossils is they tell us exactly how these creatures died, not how these creatures lived. Um, the one thing you know about fossils is that they are dead. They're a record of death. So they tell us all about how these creatures died died, not how they lived. The other thing which helps us understand how these creatures died and got buried is the type of rock that is actually, they're actually buried in. And this rock here, inside this cave, as is all the rock around this area, is all limestone. So what actually is limestone? Well, it's mostly made out of a mineral called calcium carbonate. You can find this mineral everywhere, even in your kitchen cupboard. It's basically what bicarbonate of soda is. And limestone is very special because it can be used for many things. It's basically what cement is made up of. You get limestone, you grind it into a powder, you bake it, and then when you mix water with it, it turns back into instant rock. But what about the fossils themselves in the limestone? How did they form? And more importantly, do they show evidence of being buried rapidly, or do they show evidence of being buried slowly? Is there anywhere today that we can see limestone being formed and fossils being made? Well, it turns out there is, and the best bit about it is it's just down the road. So let's head down there now and see what we can find. So we've come down here to Harper Hill, uh, which is just down the road from Windy Knoll where we were earlier. 
and we've specifically come down here to look at this great big white deposit of limestone which is literally forming as we speak just over here and you can see how big it is it is absolutely massive it goes right back into the valley over there now what can this place actually teach us about fossilization and how rocks actually form so where is this limestone actually coming from? Well, the story really begins back in the Victorian period when lime kilns were still in use. You see, they used the lime to help build their buildings. So they needed to ha have quarries where they could mine it. And just up on the hill behind me, there are several abandoned lime kilns. Now they sat there for years and it wasn't until an industrial park and a university got built up on the hill and when bacteria began to be added into the water that it really all kicked off. The lime started flooding down into the valley, running in with the water and being deposited down in the stream as it went. And of course as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, all these layers that you can see behind me began to form. And you can see the size of this valley as well. It's huge and it's rapidly filling up with this limestone. Layers upon layers are being put down, covering up everything that's in its path. You can see the walls and the fence posts that have been engulfed by this limestone layer. This is real limestone, just like the stuff we saw back in Windy Knoll, that is being laid down in real time and very, very quickly as well. But what about fossils? Are there any fossils being formed here at Harbour Hill? Well, it turns out, yes, there are. OK, so if we come down here, see what we found. If we come over here, what we have down here is our three levels of permineralization or fossilization here. First one is these. Uh, these are just normal leaves. They've fallen off the tree, they've fallen onto the ground, they're not doing a lot. You can see how crumbly they are. They're certainly not fossilizing, they're just turning into compost. These are not going anywhere. However, moving along to the next section, and what you can see is where the leaves have fallen into the water, they've started to get a covering of limey mud over them. Uh, they're not fossilized yet, you can still see the actual leaf there, but they're beginning to get covered and encased and entrapped. They're on their way to becoming fossils, but they're not quite there yet. And you can see there's quite a few of them. The third and final stage, we have a complete permineralized fossil. This is a fossil fern. It's hard, you can see how it's become fully impregnated with the lime. It's turned into rock. And this is essentially the same way that you get fossils in the real world. Things like dinosaur bones and many fossil plants are permineralized. There are many different types of fossilization. Permineralization is one of the most common ones. This is where the minerals have gone into the plant or the bone or the animal and has completely encased and infilled it with that mineral. That's what we have here. It's all about a process and that's the key word, process, because Fossilization has got nothing to do with time, but everything to do with the process. If you get the process right, you can make fossils very, very quickly. But it's not just a case of get the process right, you make fossils quickly, get the process wrong, it takes a long time. If you want to throw time into the mixture, you've got yourselves a big problem. Because all time will do is destroy your creatures long before they have a chance to become a fossil. If you want to make a fossil, you need to make it quickly. Slow fossils are no fossils. So back in January 2018, we came back here to Harbour Hill to run an experiment. And you can see the results of that experiment just down here. What you are looking at here is the remains of a cuddly toy rat that we came and hung here in January. We hung it from the fence post hanging down. At the time, loads of water was rushing over the top here from where the stream went, and it was running down into the valley below. We hung it up here, and despite the fact that the water has stopped flowing and has now gone a different route, you can see how much this has begun to permineralize. All of this layering has come down over the top of it. The rat is fairly stiff and stuck to it. It's beginning to be infilled and encased by this mineral. It is becoming a fossil rat. And even though it won't produce much more, it does make a very, very good point. Fossilization has got nothing to do with time, but everything to do with process. But I've already said that, haven't I? 
but it's such a very visual example of something that we're all, all familiar with, a cuddly toy that put under the right conditions and put through the right process, even that can become a fossil. So what have we learned here today at Harper Hill? Well, to begin with, this is an incredible deposit. It's changed so much in the last few years that I've been visiting. And you can see how in just the past couple of months, the stream has cut out a brand new gully, which is already filling up with limestone. This limestone is turning up in the stream right back in the village behind me. So it's traveling really, really far. Who knows what will happen with this deposit in the next few years, but I'm certainly looking forward to finding out. But what have we learned about fossils? Well, in a nutshell, fossilization has got nothing to do with time, but everything to do with process. I know I keep saying that, but it's really, really important. Time is your biggest enemy when it comes to creating fossils. They will destroy your creatures before they even have a chance to fossilize. If you want to get a fossil, you need to bury your organism quickly and using the right process. Otherwise, you'll never get a fossil. Now, if you want to find out more about the research we've been doing here at Harper Hill, as well as how the experiments we've been doing here link in with experiments we've been doing around the globe, particularly in Australia with stalactites and stalagmites, go to www.creationresearch.net. Make sure you get the accompanying booklet to this presentation, which is full of maps and information about how you too can come and visit Harper Hill and do your own research here. Until next time, I'm Indiana Joe, goodbye, God bless, and I will see you very soon.